Tonight we're going to present to you two very personal stories of how Asia and I got into the world of comics. Two very different but kind of similar stories. When I found like you know graphic novels, holy! I did not know that was a thing. It was like all of the Christmases ever into one. Sometimes if, when I say to people, especially coming from an Arab background and to Arab parents, and then you try to convince them that I want to do something to do with comics and for them to take it seriously. Probably nine times out of 10, the answer is definitely going to be not. There is nothing of worth that you can do wasting your time doing something to do with comics. Probably because of Sinbad and watching it as a child, I used to think that anime or this kind of manga style of drawing was an Arab art form. Hey, I was seven years old, I did not know any better. I, I don't know, one day I'm going to forgive my parents for this, but I don't know why they chose the East End of Glasgow to uh, settle in. But at the time, and in the early 90s, that was not like the friendliest place if you looked to be a bit different. And as soon as I started drawing manga, something amazing happened. All of the kids and all of my peers who used to bully me before, like the day before, became fans. Instead of seeking me out in order to um, bully or annoy me or make, um, like take the piss out of me, no, they would actually fight for the place to sit next to me quietly and watch as I drew. And that was extremely shocking for me at the time and extremely powerful. This Japanese art form managed to bridge this gap between a Libyan schoolgirl and her Scottish um, schoolmates. And I just thought, if it can have a power such as this, this is just the beginning. There's almost no limit to what you can discuss using the medium of comics or graphic novels or manga. Doing something like this, giving people the chance to step back a little bit, sometimes even through the door of the obscene, even if it's, I, mean, I think it's like the ridiculous. You give them the space to consider and to explore very um, serious sort of topics or sometimes really triggering topics in a way that is not extremely personal, that it would not absolutely shut down the topic because it's just too real. Now, this is not from the point of view of like uh, a soundbite from a news source or a news station or something with an agenda. No, this is just a human story. And it gave a completely new and raw humanitarian angle that strips you back to your own humanity and you are forced again to reconsider again and again. Where do I stand on these issues as a human being? Nobody can tell a story other than from the ex perspective through which they lived. If you have a different point of view, if you have a different perspective, then draw it, write it, because nobody can speak your voice for you. After the last, you know, few years, especially post 9-11 and then all of the things that happened here in the UK and beyond in Europe, that there was so much that is unknown about Arabs and culture. Every single time an issue happens, you have the exact same, like, you know, three, four minutes in which to try and communicate a whole issue or to represent a whole people. And people are seldom ever that shallow or easy or straightforward. And so, what I decided to do was like tell the story of my own family in Libya for people who didn't know anything about the Arab world. What kind of experiences make people people? In terms of what can comics change, they can change so much. And at the beginning, I used to think that maybe people can only draw their own personal experiences because all of this for me has been pretty personal. Is there any way to try and bring in other people's experiences, other people's voices? Perhaps they can't draw. Perhaps they have really pertinent stories to tell, really powerful stories and uh, narratives that we need to listen to and points of view, things that humanize issues. And this is afterwards where I reached and got in touch with Ben Dix. There's not much to do in a bunker. You start spending eight to 10 hours a day down there. I watched all of the Peep Show. I started watching Wire. Uh, and I read Mouse. And I was inspired, just as Asia was, of how you could tell such a complex, traumatic story of the Holocaust through sequential art. Uh, and I came out of the bunker that morning uh, and got my, my coffee and looked around and thought, I'm gonna do a graphic novel on this. No one's reading my UN reports. 
Uh, and I knew that no one was reading my UN reports because I used to put Elvis Presley sightings in my UN reports. And no one flagged my Elvis Presley sightings, which means no one read them. And I went down to, out to the field and to the IDP camps for one of the, the last times and took this photograph, which to me really symbolized the vulnerability that we were leaving 400,000 civilians in. And that's something that has changed the course of my life. Um, that decision of leaving. I drove out of there full of shame, abandonment, failure on a personal, emotional, professional level. That destroyed me. Um, I, I quit my job the next day. I flew back to London. I went to see Yolanda at Amnesty International and showed these photographs, told these stories. And through that time, I was getting many, many emails from uh, friends, from colleagues of the deaths of my friends and colleagues. And I lost 36 friends in that conflict. And back in London, I was suffering from post-traumatic stress. I couldn't, I certainly couldn't do this. I couldn't stand up and present this to you. I couldn't work out the enormity of what we had just left and what happened in this place on the other side of the world. So I thought I'm gonna readdress this idea of doing a graphic novel. I was receiving emails from my surviving colleagues and friends who were popping up in London, Zurich, Chennai as refugees, as asylum seekers. So I ran around with Lindsay and started to interview them. You had to defend every action, every character, every moment. You had to back up with references, with facts, with reports, with all of this material so that this graphic novel that comes out next year isn't a work of fiction. This is a piece of research and it's just presented in an illustrated form. Throughout that time, I realized that actually the responsibility that I had to tell these stories was very deep and, and it wasn't something that you could just tell the narrative as I saw fit. I wasn't the, I'm, I'm not the owner of these stories, so I had to keep going back to the respondent with the scripts and saying, is this your story? And therefore we developed this really interesting participatory methodology where I would go and interview someone at length, you know, a week's worth of interviews, then come back with all of that material and all the research, the reports, the photography, etc., and develop a script. Then take the script back to the respondent and say, does this rep represent your story? And give them the space to edit so that it represented their lived experience. Lindsay would then storyboard it on the left. Uh, and we would take the storyboards back to the respondent and say, does this look like your story? Uh, and again, they would say, no, that you know, there were more trees, there were bodies floating in the lake, there were whatever it was. And again, they would go through that whole editorial process so that when we finally inked it here, this is something that I can stand on this podium and say, this isn't a piece of fiction. This is a piece of work that has been tested and checked by the people who own their stories. This is beautiful. It gives dignity to this horrific experience. And actually, this is bigger than the Sri Lanka story. And it was then when I thought, I'm going to produce, build positive negatives as an organization, as a nonprofit that tells stories of people of marginalized communities, individuals who don't have that global voice, who aren't invited to stand on this stage and give their story. We're going to use positive negatives to tell their stories through art. The quiet, nuanced details of conflicts that we were able to show through the illustrated form. And suddenly you're working with this medium where it can take you into all of these details and really, really sensitive moments of people's experiences. A huge issue in that um, the comics deals with fantastically is anonymizing people. I'm so glad that Ben touched on that because a lot of people have to stay anonymous, but they still have the right to have their stories heard and communicated. Drawing is a way to do that where you can communicate the place, the situation, the atmosphere, the person, the issue, the heart of it without putting them in danger. The greatest thing probably for me about comics is having the ability to tell something in a cinematic style, both visually written, um, you, with, with one person. So to have the power to create a whole 
almost cinematic narrative alone. You are the cameraman, you are the producer, you're the director, you're the artist, you are the person who sources um, like the props. You are everything and you're able to do that with a pencil and a piece of paper. There is something so very egalitarian to me about this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.